Kia ora. Welcome back to Sloan Ranger Studio. Today we're going to be doing some non-metallic steel. Following on from our non-metallic copper and bronze that we were doing previously, we're using our feeded blight drone like we have been doing. Steel's not so bad, it's lots of greys, a little bit of blue. Let's get into it. So here is our feeded blight drone from the last episode in this series. The first thing we're going to do is create a 50-50 mix of black and Mechanica standard grey. Sorry, it's out of focus here because i got this guy in front. But we've got a 50-50 mix of black and Mechanica standard grey and we've thinned it down a little bit. It's going to take a little bit on our brush. And on this guy here, we're just going to start by picking out where we want some of our fighter points to be. And this is a cylinder, much like the, the copper video, so we're just going to push some paint up towards the center here. But because it's so large, we might end up picking, like maybe two sources of light on something so large you know maybe we'll have something in the middle here and then we might have you know lights kind of on either side so I'm gonna pick pick out that second point there and then just bring the bring the paint up towards that as well maybe on this side as well maybe just right here and then bring the paint towards that so we're picking out three points where we're going to start building up some highlights. This first step is very dark, don't worry about it, it'll get brighter. So push up that grey towards your highlight points and then maybe in these kind of areas here as well, it's going to be a little bit of light so maybe on a couple of these blades we'll, we'll pick, out, pick out where the light's going to be. Alright so that first step is done and it's not that noticeable but we're just laying out the groundwork for steps to come. So the next thing is to take some thin down Mechanicus just on its own. Just take a little bit on your brush and just in those same places where you decided the light was going to be, push, push that paint up into it. Don't worry about smoothness too much because this is steel. You know it's going to be you know pretty pretty battered and worn. You know if we were doing like silver on a high elf or something like that then you know you could be a little bit more conscious of getting things smooth, but I quite like having a little bit of, you know, randomness in the textures and keeping it a little bit battered and worn, and of course that works with Nurgle, so, you know, now I'll just pick this point here and just push that paint into it. Yeah, maybe a little bit more of a concentration towards the front of the cylinder here because there's going to be a shadow cast by this bronze bit over top of it. So a little bit more paint maybe towards the towards the ends of the cylinder. So do the same around, you know, just kind of, you know, with every step decreasing the surface area and if you find that your glazes that you're doing or your, your, your layers aren't as smooth as you like, maybe you can always go back and just glaze in some black to, you know, uh, ease that transition between any of the steps or go back a step and do the 50-50 step or whatever it happens to be. And this mathematical approach kind of helps it, helps you understand, um, you know, how the layering and how the interaction between layers works and you can easily go back by remembering, you know, oh, what was two steps before that? Oh, it was 50-50 this. So that's why I quite like this 50-50 method. So do that all around and uh, we'll come back for the next step. Okay, so we've done that step with the uh, Mechanicus on its own. Next thing we're going to do is follow the same sort of process. This time we're doing it with Dawnstone. So Dawnstone is a slightly lighter grey, void of any kind of tone. It's not really warm, it's not really cool. I don't think it's got much of a value of any kind of colour other than black and white in it, which is perfect for this uh, steel process. So take a little bit of Dawnstone, nice and thin. And same sort of thing. We're just finding our point of light and we just bring that paint towards the center there. Just push it in. Always pushing our paint towards where we want it to be brightest. So it's starting to build up now. That's not very smooth. Whoopsie daisies. But I'll thin it down a little bit more for the next time. So the next point of light was somewhere around here. Do this a couple more times. You know, and you can repeat these steps as many times as it takes to get it to a, a point where you're happy with the with the blend or with the tone. I think, you know, usually for me it's around about twice usually works. So 
Sometimes I kind of go around and I think, hmm, I can push that a little bit brighter. So yeah, kind of work your way around, push this paint around, and uh, we'll come back for the next step. Alright, so there is that Dawnstone layer. Next thing to do is to make a 50-50 mix of Dawnstone and Ulthuan Grey. Ulthuan Grey is going to be as bright as we go for this. Because with steel, it's not like silver, you know, it's not like bright, intense white. It's always a little bit dull. Uh, and Ulthuan, this colour here, is uh, you know, it's about as bright as I think steel should go. You can go brighter if you feel like it. But this is just what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial. But anyway, 50-50 Dawnstone and Ulthuan. So, got this mix here and thin it down and now we're getting very close to our highest point here so what I like to do is I like to draw a draw a line sorry take off the excess and then kind of push it up towards that point there yeah. so we're getting quite a fine area now and we're getting right towards the, the brightest brightest point of our light source Push that paint into that space there. Of course, as we get whiter and whiter, the paint gets chalkier and chalkier. So expect expect your layers to feel a little bit more sluggish now. So go around and add in your your brighter highlight now. So you can see it's starting to feel a little bit more a little bit more non-metallic-y. Um, go around, add this layer, and we'll come back for the next step. Alright, so that is starting to look pretty steely. You can see what it looks like from the back. You can see how our kind of highlights run across, so it looks like you know our light source is consistent from both sides and you know and the blades there we're trying to catch a little bit of light. Obviously it's gonna be in more shadow than the rest, so we haven't gone too extreme and I've just kind of put some little dashes in there to look like it's quite a jagged blade. So the last thing to do is to take Ulthuan on its own, nice and thin, and this is the last step, and so we're just gonna be kind of picking out, picking out little edges and little nicks and stuff, and just kind of pushing pushing this highlight to its, to its extreme. We're not gonna be doing too much blending with this. We wanna just leave this for edges. So, remember like we've talked about, you know, you kind of break up an edge, Get some focus. Not too much on your brush. Just, just pull out all these kind of jaggedy bits. You know, keeping it, keeping it jagged. I think that looks looks pretty cool. So yeah, go around and pull out all these edges. You might want to put a couple of little scratches. You know, just, just little, little ones here and there. Nothing too extreme and pull out all these edges with that ulthu and gray and we'll come back for the next part. Okay, so that is with our ulthu and gray edge highlights and scratches and you know a couple of little lines here and there to to really boost up that steel look and you know Ulthuan isn't pure white but because with steel we leave a lot of the original black and dark gray um, that Ulthuan looks really bright um, you know if we were to put real true bright on there you know something you know like this it would start feeling really really silver and that's not really what I want for this so the next thing we want to do is just to give it a little bit of a cool sheen and so what I'm gonna do is just glaze on some of this wonder paint here called athematic blue contrast paint and it's just a nice cool cool blue and obviously because it's transparent it works really well as a glaze so I'm just gonna glaze some of that on over the midtones so we want not a lot on our on our brush here what we're going to do is just over some of these areas here, obviously we don't want to take over our, our true white. I'm just going to glaze on some of that blue. Not our true white, sorry, our grey. So just over the mid-tones, we're just going to put some of this over top. And that's just going to give it a subtle, cool, cool look. It's hard to tell while it's wet because it looks very glossy. But just go around and just over the over the mid grays, glaze some of this over top of it. Don't let it pull up anywhere. You 
just a little bit of control just uh, some of that blue over top okay so that's what that blue glaze has done that was just one pass just over all of those midtones leaving that Elthuan nice and bright in that in our uh, you know kind of highest points and that non metallic is looking really nice now but of course wouldn't be a Sign Ranger Studio tutorial if we didn't add rust and ruin it so I'm gonna thin down some scrag this is our go-to color when it comes to rust it's just so perfect and then you know picking out some of these some of these kind of divots these kind of pock marks and places where the metal is eroded away by some fantastic disease conjured up by Nurgle um, so those are those are great places to pull up some rust but also you know in around these areas here where the, the water might pull up a little bit just kind of glazing it in you know kind of letting it pull this is a thin coat um, you know maybe in around these the center point of these blades the rust would kind of sit you know I don't want to go over too much of the work that I've put in to get this non-metallic so this is a bit of bravery but also a bit of subtlety so you know trying not to try not to take over the steel that we did I'm just going to add a little bit of color to it and obviously these blues and oranges that we're putting into the steel is going to help tie this whole miniature together so go around add that scrag brown and then of course add the troll slayer just afterwards and so you know in the same kind of area just add a little dot of the troll slayer that it brightens it up makes it look like really fresh rust so it's the same process we did on the blue armor tutorial here if you've been following along so go around and do that and we'll come back to show it off when it's all done all right and there we have it that is our finished off steel it's looking pretty good pretty happy with it you can see you know lots of dark but also a bit of light catching up catching off the you know our light sources that we picked out at the start you know our rust and our blue glaze is working together nicely with the rest of the model you know our bronze or you know maybe it's more a bit more like gold try to make it bronze anyway but you know that's working well with our steel there and oh yeah that's a nice angle um yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with that i hope it wasn't too difficult to follow along you know it's a few it's a few steps of mixing in grays but it's pretty straightforward you're basically just starting black and working your way up to a very bright gray um, you know, if you wanted to make this silver, you'd just have a little bit more of the, the medium grey and less of the black. But, you know, we wanted a quite dull steel look, so we're keeping a lot of our black in the mix. You know, our rust is nice and subtle. It's not taking over, you know, you could really, you could really overdo the rust here and you'd lose that non-metallic feel that you've worked so hard to achieve. But, I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments how it, uh, how it works for you and, you know what you thought of the video and any other feedback i'm always trying to improve the channel and of course if you like my content please like and subscribe um you know hit the bell if you want to follow along and see all of the stuff that i put out oh just reminds me i gotta do the copper on these i did the copper here but i forgot to do the copper up there <laughs> anyway next up we'll probably do the eyeball or maybe we'll do the flesh comment below what you'd prefer thanks again and i'll see you next time